even though Lexus already has several hybrids in its lineup, this one, the HS250H, is a purpose-built hybrid. You can only buy this car as a hybrid, not in any other way. A couple of interesting things about it. Notice this little quarter window that's at the front here. This is the first time I've seen it on a luxury car. Normally you'd see this as a blacked out panel and the mirror would be mounted to that. However, the big thing in design these days is to not mount the mirrors right up in the A-pillar, but to put them on the door. That's considered more prestigious, more luxury-like. Another curious thing that you get in this car here is this, this little kick-up panel that you see on the back of the, the door here. Something of a design statement that you also see on the BMW X1 and X3. Just kind of curious how uh, Lexus is using this. If they didn't have it, you'd see this window come to a much sharper point. That's kind of a design statement that, uh, that Honda uses and definitely Lexus didn't want to go there. I think that's why you're getting a bit of this kick up. Take a look at the trunk here too because the trunk space in the other Lexuses is pathetic. In this one, you get a reasonably good amount of room, not as big a trunk as you might see in other cars, but it goes pretty deep. The other ones you're lucky just to get maybe four grocery bags into. So this again being a purpose-built hybrid instead of a car being retrofitted to be a hybrid gives you a lot more trunk space. One of the first things that you notice in this car is how they've taken the center stack out. It's almost like a flying buttress. The reason they do that is to present these controls, especially this mouse-like contraption. You just move this sort of joystick thing. It's easier, easy just to rest your palm on this and move this around and then you have an enter button that you've got to click on and it brings up whatever menu that you want to look at. Uh, you can bring up a, a variety of things. I, I found it fairly easy to use but you do have to get used to it it's just new i guess in that regard whether it's better than mmi or iDrive, i don't know I, I still found i had to learn this thing but i guess uh in retrospect it doesn't have as much that you have to learn as say like iDrive does we can play with the technology all day long but the real proof in the pudding is driving these cars come on let's get this thing out on the road and i'll show you a few more things about it One of the first things that you notice when you start up this car is on the nav screen it actually turns into a video screen and there's a video camera on the very front nose of the car so that you can see if there's anything in your blind spots that you don't want to run over or have pedestrians come walking into your line of view if you're tight in traffic. Of course half the fun of any hybrid is trying to get the best possible fuel economy that you can out of it. And this car is fun in that regard. We're getting in the low to mid 30 mile per gallon range in this vehicle, but it's only fun if you try to drive it as a hybrid. There's kind of a lag in, in how this thing really drives at speed. When you put it in power mode, the car is more responsive don't let that fool you into thinking that all of a sudden this thing's already got a lot more power to it. It doesn't, but it is more responsive in the power mode. The real thing to watch about this car though is how it sells because so far the hybrids that Lexus has come out with, the LS, the RX, the GS, they're nailed to the showroom floor. They just don't sell. So now we got to see if Lexus can truly sell a purpose-built hybrid in the luxury segment. 